the snowmobile, the world's favorite Arctic pony. We love them, ride them, race them, and sometimes crash them. The snowmobile as we know it has been a fixture of hardy living and winter recreation since the Second World War ended, but the origins of the snowmobile are actually pretty surprising and go back even before the First World War. It is 1913, and a Buick dealer and inventor in the small town of Ossipi, New Hampshire, I know I mispronounced that, likely fed up with the struggle of driving in winter on unpaved roads and using slick tires has radically altered his Buick automobile. By adding a second axle in front of the driving wheels, he is able to connect the pair with the track system that is very similar to a modern military tank. And in the front, the wheels are elevated above the ground, and below him is a pair of skis serving as a means to steer while gliding over snow and ice. The invention is called the motor sleigh, and the inventor is named Virgil D. White. It would take a few years after 1913 before the world would hear from the Buick and Ford dealer out of the small New Hampshire town again. It would not be until 1917 when the first rumblings of a new idea would pop up again in the form of a patent filing that looked very similar to the first Buick prototype. But the cold winter of 1922 was when Virgil White and his invention would finally grace the newspapers, magazines, dealers, and roads for millions to see. In 1922, a novel invention for the use on Ford Model T cars in snowy weather would finally go into production, and the name given to the invention was the snowmobile. To describe this contraption better, an excerpt from Canadian Ford owner in 1922 describes the invention as this. Snowmobile proves success. Virgil D. White of New Hampshire is the inventor of a new attachment for Ford cars and trucks. He puts them on snowshoes, that is, the automobile's mechanical equivalent of snowshoes, believing that the same principle would apply to cars in places where snow otherwise prevented them from being used he built runners 5 feet long by 8 inches with a steel surface 1 eighth of an inch thick and replaced the front wheels with them. The rear axle he extended, attached a heavier wheel to a worm drive, and added a pair of Ford wheels as idlers on which a caterpillar tread was placed. This tread gives additional bearing surface and drive power to the snowmobile as he has cushioned his creation. The runners in front packed the trail for the wheels and marvelous results have been from the invention. So essentially how this worked is you would get in touch with the snowmobile company, that was their name, and order the kit. And when the kit arrived, you were given the front skis and steel tracks, which were linked together with fabric in the beginning or steel later on. For certain body styles, a different driveline and rear gears would also be required. And then you would convert your run of the mill tin Lizzie into a snowmobile. And presumably after winter was over, you would remove the kit and merrily motor along in fair weather again. There was also complete Model T's already converted that could be purchased. And aside from looking different in form, the snowmobile kit is extremely similar to the modern day equivalent in function. Runners in front and a track system that can force one through the snow in the back. This might seem a tad bit arduous to have to reassemble half of your car to make it work in the snow. But in circa 1920, American roads sucked in summer and turned into complete quagmires in winter. Snow removal was still pretty rare, and one solution even was to pack snow down with giant rollers to help horse sleighs maneuver. And four-wheel drive was almost non-existent on cars. Only heavy-duty trucks like the Nash Quad were even offered in four-wheel drive. So the silly idea to convert Model Ts actually was not so silly and probably saved many lives by helping doctors and firefighters get to those in need quickly. And what did the privilege of turning your Model T into a snowmobile cost? Somewhere between $250 and $395, which does not sound like a lot, but considering that a Model T started at $319 in 1922, you get a sense real quick about what you were having to pay to make your car into a snowmobile figure that proved to be too much for a lot of people. In the end, around 20,000 snowmobiles were made between 1923 and 1929, and in that same time, around 7 million Model Ts would be manufactured. Production would cease when the factory making the snowmobiles would burn to the ground, and probably not seeing a future in making kits for a car that had now been out of production for two years, the factory was never rebuilt, closing the first chapter to a long history of the snowmobile. Today, the snowmobile is enjoyed and relied on by millions globally. 
from connecting remote Arctic communities to giving families hours of memories. The snowmobile is a truly reliable steed that is not going anywhere soon. But it's always good to reflect on the origins of our favorite winter toy, the humble Tin Lizzie.